Hi, I'm Ruth Werner, and this is my audiovisual sidebar that will accompany my article in Massage and Bodywork magazine called Critical Thinking. Think about thinking, then act. In this short piece, I have compiled input from 15 of our profession's thought leaders whose opinions I especially respect. I added up all the experience put together here, and between us, we bring you 400 years worth of wisdom about where critical thinking fits in our profession. As I had these conversations and I accumulated these hours of material, I looked for commonalities for sure, but I was also really interested in differences of opinions or points of view. And it was fascinating because every person I spoke to had a different thought about what critical thinking really is and different ideas about where massage therapists get stuck in critical thinking and ideas about where our profession has the most room to grow in this concept or what's most the, what are the most important things to really grasp about critical thinking. But when the talk turned to turning critical thinking into action, we all reconverged about how important it is to bring these skills into the session room. I hope you enjoy this little piece as much as I enjoyed the time I spent with my beloved colleagues. And I want to take this final opportunity to thank them and to appreciate them for all they have contributed to me and to our profession. Thank you. I'm, as you said, Alyssa Haynes, and I am a almost 16 years practicing massage in a little couple little towns south of Boston. And uh, my little side gig is also teaching business and marketing skills to other massage therapists um, via Massage Business Blueprint with my partner, Michael. I am Annie LaCroix. I am the owner of Columbia River Institute of Massage Therapy in Wenatchee, Washington. Sure, I'm Brent Jackson with, um, I'm the program director for massage therapy for Central Carolina Technical College. And I'm also a board of trustees member for the Massage Therapy Foundation and current vice president of Massage Therapy Foundation. Hello, my name is Cal Cates. I'm an LMT practicing in Arlington, Virginia. And you are the? I am the executive director uh, of a nonprofit that's based in the Washington, D.C. area called Heal Well. Hi, I'm Diana Thompson. I am a licensed massage therapist in Seattle, Washington. And, um, and I also uh, speak about massage, teach massage, uh, as well as do massage and have educational materials and um, the like. So... Um, so I have lots of interests in the massage profession, being that it's been my profession now for almost 40 years. So my name is Doug Nelson. I'm from Champaign, Illinois, where I have a practice here. I have an office called Bodywork Associates. That This is our 38th year uh, for the office. Uh, I'm also an educator uh, in the field and have a teaching institute called NMT Midwest. And uh, and then for, for the next two months, I am the president of the Massage Therapy Foundation as well. So we'll finish my third year, and <clears throat> so my tenure will be up at the end of February. I'm Michelle Renee. I am the president of the Alliance for Massage Therapy Education. I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I also serve as the Director of Integrative Care at Northwestern Health Sciences University. I've been working at that institution for several years, and and previously uh, taught massage therapy for several years and uh, was the massage therapy program director. My name's Pam Fitch and I've been a massage therapist since 1988. So I have been passionate and you might say obsessive about this uh, profession for literally decades. And I teach professional practice issues. I realized that um, there weren't very many resources or texts about this and so I wrote a textbook on uh, communication professional practice issues and uh, the therapeutic relationship so that's me oh thank you for having me Ruth so uh, my name is Robin Anderson I am the president-elect of the massage therapy foundation um, I'm also the director of the massage therapy education program at the community college of Baltimore County in Baltimore Maryland well it's always a pleasure to talk to you Ruth we've been around the block a few times a couple of times 
So Sandy Fritz, uh, I have been a massage therapist for 41 years now, and I have my bachelor's degree in science, and my master's is in organizational leadership. I have written lots of textbooks, but the two that most people are aware of is Fundamentals of Therapeutic Massage and Essential Sciences for Therapeutic Massage, both published by Elsevier. I've owned a school for 34 years and actively teach, and I have had a varied uh, massage therapy career over the years. Good morning, Ruth. Um, thank you for inviting me here today. Uh, my name is Susan Salvo, and I have been a massage therapist since 1982. Um, I'm still in practice as of 2021. Uh, I write textbooks, as you do. Uh, I teach CE classes like you do. And I uh, write uh, expert reports for uh, litigation cases, as you do. And uh, on the Massage Therapy Foundation Case Report Committee, I think this is something you're, you're still participating in. I want to teach entry-level classes at the uh, Louisiana Institute of Massage Therapy in Lake Charles, Louisiana. So this topic is near and dear to my heart because I'm always thinking about not uh, what to think, but how to think. My name is Till, Till Luca. I am the director of advancedtrainings.com. For about 20 years, I was on the faculty of the Rolf Institute and have been working for something like 36, 37 years as a manual therapist. And uh, I also write for uh, massage and body work. And you have some books and you do some trainings and you... Yeah, yeah. books and trainings and good conversations, etc. Right. Well, and of course, also co-host of the amazing... The Thinking the Practitioner Thinking Podcast. Practitioners. Thank you with Whitney Lowe. Right. Absolutely. Hi, I'm Tom Myers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> pleased to be with you. And uh, I am been working in body work for 45 years, and I'm the author of the book Anatomy Trains. My name's Tracy Walton, and I've been a massage therapist for 30 years um, and done research in massage therapy, um, taught as an educator in oncology massage therapy, and written a fair amount in the field. One is the book, Medical Conditions and Massage Therapy, a decision-making approach. When you hear the term critical thinking, tell me what that means for you. I was quite amused when you uh, asked me to talk about this because I've been waiting for somebody to ask me this question. I would say that critical thinking is uh, a commitment to let go of certainty. That so much of what we consider true is really a social construct. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> Critical thinking for me is the ability to make judgments. In this case, we're talking about, you know, professional settings, so professional judgments. That's based on facts. I, I think I would define it as probably the single biggest problem facing our profession, if not our world. <clears throat> For me, the essential element of critical thinking is standing before my client as an utter innocent each time um, to, to not make presumptions. Critical thinking is messy. I think it means being able to step outside of my own initial and perhaps emotional reaction to something and look at it objectively um, from a variety of perspectives, maybe. Because if you're not schooled in critical thinking, then it just feels like you're being mean. And if I know one thing about massage therapists, they're really kind people right. and they don't want to be critical of <laughs> other people. So critical thinking for me gets me really excited, number one, because it's um, it, it gives a language and even a scientific basis to what we tend to call intuition. As long as that is defensible, that I think is some critical thinking, you know, that, that you decided from an array of choices, this is the most um, appropriate choice for in this moment. 
intuition is real and um, and we use it and it increases of course with our experience and that's because it's really based in knowledge and i feel like intuition actually strengthens because we have a a bigger catalog of experiences that surprised us and we don't think of it that way but sort of when you have the most access to your intuition is often when you don't know which way to go if you inflate your intuition beyond what it really is and say that you can just get through a hard situation, clinical situation with intuition, that that's problematic because intuition can be fallible, you know, mm -hmm. and information can be misinformation or even disinformation. Mm -hmm. So the best balance of that, when you have the right amount of intuition and the right about amount of information, when you put those together, that's really true wisdom. Really, when people are looking at teaching, I think some people just throw the information at the student and expect them to automatically, you know, say uh, their critical thinking. But instead, you know, do you scaffold it out? Do you show them how to make a decision to approach? And then do you supply them with the resources? Because you don't have to know everything. You just have to know where to find the answer. We feel like if we don't know something that it means we're not qualified, where I think sometimes being able to say, I don't know how to do something shows that you're qualified enough to be aware of of what you do know and what you don't know and and getting students to say to be okay with admitting that they don't know the answer to something and so they'd like to research it further i've told the students many times you can talk to your clients and say i need to get more information about this before i feel comfortable moving forward one of the things that my professor my teacher told me carol kresky who was my massage uh, teacher at in uh, the New Mexico School of Natural Therapeutics, she had an interesting comment and it really has stuck with me. It's, um, it took me one year to build my business and four years to know what I was doing. Many of the people who come to our classes have either subtly or directly been told that they're stupid, that they can't think for themselves, and therefore they're looking for the authority like you or me or somebody else to tell them what to do because their own authority has been taken out from under them. Um, because until people have some ownership over a concept, it's very difficult for them to apply terms and frameworks and processes to problems, they, they have to understand it themselves. I feel it is my responsibility as an educator training someone to be my colleague, basically mm -hmm. when they're done, mm -hmm. is to be able to operate as an independent healthcare practitioner. To not, not fall back on those defaults, which most of which we know were incorrect or at, at the very least, lacking in context, right. and uh, make your own decision to provide safe treatment. My own test about whether I'm critically thinking or not is, when was the last time I was really surprised by something I didn't think was gonna be true? When's the last time I actually got served up a quote fact or a piece of information that didn't fit with what I think was already true and had it changed me, had it changed my mind? Right. These are the things in which I learn the most because when somebody comes in and I do what I do and it works, I've learned nothing. I mean, good for them, but I've learned nothing. The struggle is where the learning happens. Mm -hmm. It's not just, don't focus on what you did, did right. Actually, going back to the, the mm -hmm. conversation about experiencing the best teacher, focus on what you did wrong and learn yeah. from that. Mistake. You don't learn as much when things go the way you think they're going to go. So. That's right. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing, Ruth, is you make a mistake and you go, oh, that's going to be a great story in classroom. That's what being a lifelong learner is about, is being able to be continually informed by new information, recognize when we had a false understanding of something before, be able to set that aside and actually have that then free us to think about something in a new way. I think I'm probably more interested in uncritical thinking. What does that mean? It's uh, the ability to consider or even see the validity in other points of view, hmm. you know, uh, even more than I am in my trust of my own ability to arrive at the truth. For me, that critical thinking is really completely and fully savoring the question instead of rushing to an answer. Critical thinking 
is the mystery. It is walking into every session going, I don't know, let's see what happens. And being able to hold the opposites of, I am an expert or I have 15, 20, whatever years of experience with this condition or whatever the person coming to me is presenting with. And the essential not knowingness of each moment being its own moment.